Hey guys, welcome to another episode of CUDA Education. I'm your host, uh, Nicholas Main. So today what I wanted to talk to you was um, about CUDA environment variables. Now, environment variables are sort of a, it's, it's, it's like an option list or a setting list that, that dictates how your code is run or in, in what sort of settings is your code run. And it, 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 it you know, it, it includes like a compile time, variables, execution time variables. It includes uh, visual profiler uh, variables, like when, when the visual profiler is running. Uh, there's a whole list of, um, there's a whole list of variables that, that you could choose from. And actually, I will just show you how to get it. So if you go to kudaeducation.com slash CUDA environment variables, and then you click this link, you basically will go to um, a page that outlines all the different variables that are under the CUDA educate, uh, the, all the environment variables that, that you could play with, right? So today I'm just gonna briefly go through this one because it's it's the most commonly used and, and, you know, visible one, right. And easiest to understand. Um, <clears throat> I, the reason I, st I stumbled on this or, you know, had to deal with it was because I was trying to, I'm trying to work on hyperq, which is, you know, how many connections the, or how many lines of, of connections the, the CPU has to the GPU and this CUDA device max connections variable is, is what's needed to do that to make your, you know, your code run faster, especially when you're launching multiple concurrent kernels. But I haven't been able to really get, get the HyperQ stuff to work or to get it so that my, my system runs faster. So I still have to work on that. But, um, in the process of learning this stuff, I, I, um, <clears throat> I learned about this. So, uh, first of all, kudaeducation.com, please visit the site. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Kuda Education. When I upload videos, you will be notified, of course, of the new stuff so you could continue to learn. Um, Twitter, at Kuda Education. Um, what else is there? Oh, uh, please consider donating. It takes a lot of time and energy to make these videos and to, to figure out what's going on. So. Please donate to the cause, help those that help you. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. So in terms of environment variables, there are two ways that you could um, modify, create, and, and, and implement environment variables. The first way is through the system control panel in Windows. I, I'm running in a Windows environment, so you, you, know, you, you go into the system, panel and actually I will just do that right now. So you go into, you just search for system in the control panel or, or what have you in the search bar. And then when you go there, you will see um, this advanced system settings. Click on that and you basically will get this bad boy, right? And then when you get here, all you have to do is you go to environment variables. Now, for the most part, all this CUDA path stuff um, and most of the other necessary variables are automatically implemented when you download the CUDA toolkit. As far as I can remember, I don't, I don't remember having to, to, to create any environment variables when, when I was install, installing CUDA toolkit nine, right? So um, actually, yeah, th this is the, um, I don't remember having to install any environment variables. And, and actually this CUDA visual, visible devices, um, I'm not sure if I created it or it was automatically there, but when you install CUDA Toolkit 9, um, it, it automatically defaults to zero and you can, um, and you know, it, it basically means it's the first device. Okay, so what I did here, just to make sure I created an error, I, I put CUDA visible devices at five um, and I don't have a fifth or a sixth device on my system. The, the, the counter starts from zero. So I don't have a sixth device on my system. I just have a one 
G NVIDIA GPU device, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a project and we're going to call it CUDA Education Environment. Um, remember, it's, it's this guy, that guy. So I created an environment. And then what I do, remember to always um, <clears throat> change the properties so that the code actually runs, the compiler or what have you, right? If you if you don't if you have if you want to know how to install CUDA Toolkit nine, just go to my website the the, the very first uh, post uh, how to install CUDA Toolkit nine, or just search for it, uh, and it will give you the instructions. So we're gonna try and compile it and then run the code. So we compile first. All right, the com compilation, and then we run. And then we run. All right, so I get this error. CUDA set device failed. You do not have a CUDA enabled GPU installed, right? Blah, blah, blah. Add with CUDA failed. Please press anything to continue. The reason it failed is because, of, of course, again, the. Um, this this thing was set to five right so what we're going to do is we're going to set it back to zero if you don't have the variable you could always create it you could do a new and create CUDA visible devices and then have control over it so then so then we set it to zero we do okay we do okay now you do have to um you can't just set it and run you you actually have to close visual studio and then um open it open it back up because like when we when i run it now it still has the same error okay so what we're going to do is we're going to close um visual studio and then open it back up Okay, so then now I rebuild. And then, all right, and you see I get my solution now, right? So this is just the default program when, once you install CUDA Toolkit 9. So this is, that's, that's the first way that you could have control over the environment variables, okay? Uh, just notice that if you decide to do it if you decide to do it here and you do change variables, you're gonna have to close. Um, you're gonna have to close Visual Studio if you're if you're if if you decide to do it here, you're gonna have to close Visual Studio, and you you probably if you're running the command prompt, maybe you have to close the command prompt and open it back up again. I, I I'm not sure about like if you're doing it through NVProf and all that, right? You're gonna have to close and reopen and then then it will register the new thing so this is one way okay but there's another way you could programmatically change the variables within the code right and again this is one of the things i stumbled on while working on the um while working on the um, <clears throat> on the issue. So you basically in main, which is your main programming area, right? For you guys, C sharp aficionados, right? So you set, you run this function set and I name, what have you, what have you, and you, um, and you, Put in the name of the variable that you want. So here for us it would be CUDA visible devices. And we set it to let's let's try and make it error again. So we set it to five, 
right? And then we actually have another piece of code. So this, this set env is not native to Windows, okay? So we, we have to basically create another uh, piece of code or a function that mimics what sent, sent, set end really does in like Linux or what have you, right? So this is the code here. You could always get this code on, on kudaeducation.com. So don't, don't, don't have no fear. Um, you would download it and everything, right? So, so this is the, um, <clears throat> this is the function here that you use to, to basically set the value of the variable. And this is the variable outlined here. Okay, this this is not native to Windows, but it's native to other operating systems or what have you. So we we create our own version. But uh, what what we're trying to do now is to to programmatically influence the value of this environment variable CUDA visible devices, right? And remember that. All of these, all of these, um, you could you could basically get get here, right? So that's what we're trying to do. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> notice that we have it set five here, but in in our in our in our uh, system environment variables we have it set zero. So we're gonna see who takes precedent over the value for CUDA visible devices. So we'll rebuild it. And then we'll run it. So it says here, CUDA set device failed. Do you have a CUDA enabled, blah, blah, blah. So notice how um, in, in the system settings, it has it as zero, but programmatically, I have it as five here. And this value takes priority or precedence over what is here, okay? So um, if, if you, if you want to do environment variables that are, 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 you know, project by project or code by code, you could always overwrite them by setting it here, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to change it back to zero, rebuild and uh, run the code. And you see that um, it runs and it actually prints out the variable value here so that you could see when you're running, when you're running your code in the console, what the value is, right? So those are the two ways of, of setting environment variables. Um, again, there, there, there are a lot, lot more variables that you could play with and, and understand and, and, and affect how your system runs, right? But, um, you know, I, I will be posting this video here and also um, posting a whole bunch of other stuff on, on, on my website. So that's the conclusion of the video. Uh, guys, remember to donate, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff I have up here. I'm messing with CUDA and uh, TensorFlow, which is TensorFlow is like uh, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence stuff. I have a whole category dedicated to installing software. So if you're new to the game, you could install software, right? For either CUDA stuff or TensorFlow stuff. Um, and there, are, you know, of course, I have a category called tutorials, things of that nature. Um, so, you know, CUDA education is where it's at. And, you know, remember to donate, help those that help you. It takes me a lot of time to figure this stuff out and to, to comb through the internet and, and figure out how to do things. So help those that help you. Um, see, I have code and everything. I will, I will post the code on here once I'm done with this video so that you can, um, you could, you could play around with it and, and, and do all this stuff with it. All right. I'm your host, Nicholas Main. Thank you for watching another episode of Kuna Education. You have a great day.